Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. Oh my gosh, my viewers, my subscribers, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you guys so much. So thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means more to me than I can ever let you know. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're new to my channel, I hope you would consider hitting that little red subscribe button. I would love to have you come back and join us for future videos. I love reading your comments. I'm slow at responding, but I appreciate and I read each and every one. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I also appreciate when you give me a thumbs up. You like my video. That helps my channel grow, gets my videos out there so I can meet some more wonderful people like you. So anyway, today we are doing our June Book of the Month Club. It was a hard decision. There were a few in here that really had me do I want it? How do I want to get an extra one this month? But I was good. I just kept a one because as you know, I've kind of slowed down from reading. I took that break in April to kind of get ready for company and then just trying to get caught up and I just have not got caught up. I mean, I don't mind being two to three videos behind and commenting, but when I'm like a week behind constantly, that really drives me crazy. And so, yeah, I haven't been taking the extra time to do any reading, but I am hoping, hoping, hoping this month I can get back into it. I've got some really great books that I want to get into reading. So for Book of the Month Club, um, again, if you use my link below, it's going to get your first book for $5. After that, it would be $15.99. Shipping is included. They give you, and most of the time, it's going to be five different genres to choose from every month books that they've chosen for you. If you do not like that, those books, you can easily click on skip um, or you can pick one of those books after you've picked a book you can pick additional books to put into your um, your shipment as well i haven't read up on it but i know they've started doing audio books as well so i haven't um, looked into it to see how that works but if you're into the auto audio books and while i'm working i mean i used to always have like the radio on just kind of have a little bit of background noise because that's what i'm used to at you know at the office we always had you know a radio station playing but um when you're home by yourself and there's absolutely no one there and especially when it's quiet and the phones aren't ringing you kind of need some background noise just to kind of keep your sanity so i've been listening to free audio books on YouTube because I don't have to watch them. I can just kind of listen to them in the background. Um, so I don't know if I'd want to pay for them when I know I can get them for free, but I think it's something if you want to download and be able to have it forever, then that's the way to go to get maybe some of your favorites. And I've had some favorites that of course they disappear from YouTube as maybe copyright infringements or people's stuff doing their channel and take their channels down so there's some that i've really enjoyed and i wanted to go back and read and i cannot or listen to and i can't find them so if you're interested in audiobooks and being able to download them and have them with you for car trips and things like that then that might be the way to go for the future all righty so anyway for this month there were some great books. So we had a fantasy. I've had a few fantasy books and I really enjoyed them. This one that I started reading, I maybe got 200 pages and I just could not get into it. So I said, you know what, I'm going to put it aside and maybe pick it up at another time when I'm maybe more into it or whatever. But anyway, I've had some great ones that I loved. Um, there's a contemporary fiction, a historical fiction, and a literary fiction. And um, the thriller. So I think you know which one I picked, right? So anyway, let's get into the uh, first book that they chose for us. But anyway, I've had some great fantasy books. Really loved them. So this one is called Ink Blood Sister Scribe, and it's by Emma Tors. So it says, in this epic adventure, two estranged sisters bear the weighty responsibility to protect their magical family history. For generations, the Kolotai family has guarded a collection of ancient and rare books, books that let a person walk through walls or manipulate the elements, books of magic that half-sisters Joanna and Hester have been raised to revere and protect. All magic comes with a price, though, and for years the sisters have been separated. Esther has fled to a remote base in Antarctica to escape the fate that killed her own mother, and Joanna's isolated herself in their family home in Vermont, devoting her life 
to the study of the cherished volumes. But after their father dies, suddenly while reading a book, Joanna has never seen before the sisters must reunite to preserve their family legacy. In the process, they'll uncover a world of magic far bigger and more dangerous than they ever imagined. And all the secrets their parents kept hidden, secrets that span centuries, continents, and even other libraries. And for the second book, it's a contemporary fiction. It's called The Wishing Game by Meg Schaffer. So this moving, transportive story follows four bookish souls competing for a rare book from their favorite author. Make a wish. Lucy Hart knows better than anyone what it's like to grow up without parents who loved her. In a childhood marked by neglect and loneliness, Lucy found her solace in books, namely the Clock Island series by Jack Masterson. Now, a 26-year-old teacher's aide, she is able to share her love of reading with bright young students, especially seven-year-old Christopher Lamb, who was left orphaned after the tragic death of his parents. Lucy would give anything to adopt Christopher, but the idea of becoming a family seems like an impossible dream without proper funds and stability. But be careful what you wish for. Just when Lucy is about to give up, Jack Masterson announces he's finally written a new book. Even better, he's holding a contest at his home on the real Clock Island, and Lucy is one of the four lucky contestants chosen to compete to win the one and only copy. For Lucy, the chance of winning the most sought after book in the world means everything to her and Christopher. But first, she must contend with the ruthless book collectors, wily opponents and their distractingly handsome and grumpy Hugo Reese the illustrator of the Clock Island books. Meanwhile, Jack, the mastermind, Masterson, is plotting the ultimate twist, ending that could change all their lives forever. You might just get it. And the next book is a historical fiction. It's called Lady Tan's Circle of Woman by Lisa C. It's a sumptuous tale of female friendship and leadership in 15th century China, challenging women's place in society. According to Confucius, an educated woman is a worthless woman. But Tan Yangsin, born into an elite family, yet haunted by death, separations, and loneliness, is being raised by her grandparents to be of use. Her grandmother is one of only a handful of female doctors in China, and she teaches Yangtzean the pillars of Chinese medicine, the four examinations, looking, listening, touching, and asking, something a man can never do with a fem female patient. From a young age, Yangtzean learns about women's illnesses many of which relate to childbearing. Alongside a young midwife in training, Mei Ling, the two girls find fast friendship and a mutual purpose. Despite the prohibition that a doctor should never touch blood while a midwife comes in frequent contact with it, and they vow to be forever friends, sharing in each other's joys and struggles. No mud, no lotus, they tell themselves, from adversi adversity, beauty can bloom. But when young Xian is sent to, into an arranged marriage, her mother-in-law forbids her from seeing Mei Ling and from helping women and girls in the household. Young Xian is to act like a proper wife, embroider bound foot slippers, 
pluck instruments, recite poetry, give birth to sons, and stay forever within the walls of the family compound, the garden of fragrant delights. How might a woman like Yangtzean break free of these traditions, go on to treat women and girls from every level of society and lead a life of such importance and many of her remedies that are still used five centuries later? How might the power of friendship support or complicate these efforts? Lady Tan's Circle of Women is a captivating story of women helping other women. It also is a triumphant reimagining of the life of a woman who was remarkable in the Ming Dynasty and would be considered remarkable today. And our next book is also a fiction. This one is a literary fiction called Banyan Mood by Tao Tai. A dilapidated Florida mansion is more than a home in this multi-generational story of Vietnamese mothers and daughters. When Anne Tran gets the call that her fiercely beloved grandmother Min has passed away, her life is already at a crossroads. In the years since she's last seen Min, Anne has built a seemingly perfect life, a beautiful lake house, a charming professor boyfriend, and invites to elegant parties that bubble over with champagne and good taste. But it all crumbles with one positive pregnancy test. Well, with both her relationship and carefully planned future now in question, Anne returns home to Florida to face her estranged mother, Yurong. Back in Florida, Yurong is simultaneously mourning her mother and resenting her for having a relationship with Anne that she never did. Then Anne and Yurong learn that Min has left them both the Banyan house, the crumbling old manor that was Anne's childhood home, and it's all strange gothic glory. Under the same roof, for the first time in years, mother and daughter must face the simmering question of their past and their uncertain futures. And while trying to rebuild their relationship without the one person who's always held them together. Running parallel in this is Min's story as she goes from a love-struck teenager living in the shadow of the Vietnam War to a determined young mother immigrating to America in search of a better life for her children. And when Anne makes a shocking discovery in the Banyan House's attic, long buried secrets come to life as it becomes clear how decisions Min made in her youth affected the rest of her life and beyond. Spanning decades and continents from 1960s Vietnam, Vietnam to the wild swamplands of the Florida coast, Banyan Moon is a stunning and deeply moving story of mothers and daughters, the things we inherit, and the lives we choose to make from our inheritance. Alrighty, those were some awesome books. They all sound really meaningful, profound. It's like something that you can read and take away something from. And just the 60s, I mean, I grew up in the 60s. I had friends and my friend's brothers who went into the Vietnam War that we never, never returned. Of course, I'm dead. And so it's a time that I remember and just, um, just a, an important time in history to never forget, even though with today's society, those books may be banned, who knows? But um, anyway, they just really sounded like good books. But as you know, I'm drawn to thrillers. Alrighty, and now for the one I chose, you know, I'm going to be drawn to like the thrillers, the mystery, the horror stories, just things like that. I just love books that just keep me guessing and engage my mind. And yeah, I love that type. So anyway, this one, can you tell by the cover? She Started It by Sean Gilbert. And I'm going to have to read, after I read the synopsis and things like that, I'm going to have to read the first two pages of this book 
you were going to be like, wow, Nancy, read that one next, please. So anyway, this one sounds so good. So she started it by Sean Gilbert. Revenge is a dish best served with champagne. And on this remote tropical island, it's the only thing on the menu. The party of a lifetime is nothing like what they expected. Annabelle, Esther, Tanya, and Chloe are best friends, or were as children, despite drifting apart in adulthood. Shared secrets have kept them bonded for better or worse, even as their childhood dreams haven't quite turned out as they'd hoped. Then one day they receive a wholly unexpected, but not entirely unwelcome, invitation from another old friend. Poppy Greer has invited them to her extravagant bachelorette party, a first-class plane ticket to three days of white sand, cocktails, and relaxation on a luxe private island in the Bahamas. None of them have spoken to Poppy in years, but Poppy's Instagram pics shows them that the girl they used to consider, sorry about that, <coughs> Uh, consider the weakest link in that group has definitely made good and made money. Curiosity gets the better of them. Besides, who can turn down a posh, all-expense-paid vacation on a Caribbean island? The first-class flight and the island's accommodations are just as opulent as expected. Even the scenic island proves more remote than that anticipated quite remote, in fact, with no cell service and no other guest, the women quickly discover they've underestimated Poppy and each other. As their darkest secrets are revealed, the tropical adventure morphs into a terrifying nightmare. I know, and if that's not enough to grab you, listen to this. Alrighty, so this is a prologue, and it says Robin, May 22nd, 2023. Sorry, had a little coughing fit, starting over. So anyway, this is a prologue, and it's Robin, and it's dated May 22nd, 2023. So there's only the bride waiting for me, and she's covered in blood. Normally, at the end of the holiday, on the island, the whole party is ready with their suitcases, sunburned but cheerful. As I power across to them in my deck boat, they're often not looking at me, but taking final glances of the island and the white sandy beaches, clear water and palm trees. It's a perfect day to be at sea this morning. The sun is warm on my back and the tide is on my side, but the bride waiting for me has changed everything. I wouldn't call myself as an easily shaken person. When you run a private island, you prepare, prepare for every possibility. Just 30 minutes by speedboat from the mainland, I'm always there if something should go wrong. The guests on the island have the island to themselves, but I've not left them stranded. There's an emergency phone and a fully stocked first aid kit. Crises have happened before. Of course they have. Someone thought they'd climbed the edge of the cliffside and ended up breaking their leg. Another woman insisted her pregnancy wouldn't be a bother and went into labor on the first night. I guess I thought I'd seen it all. I haven't seen this. The boat reaches the pier and I'm able to cut the engine and secure it before the bride hurries over. What happened? I ask, how forceful my voice sounds. Is everyone okay? Do I need to call an ambulance? Now that she's reached me, the bride seems to be in a state of shock. There are deep gashes in her hands, but I'm not sure they're enough to cause the devastation of her thin white dress. All across the front are huge blood stains, grown dark with time. Scratches cover one side of her face. A slight bruise is underneath her eye. I reach out a tentative hand and she jerks backward. Sorry. 
I look around trying to find signs of the others. It's too quiet here. I think back to only days ago, a happy, loud group of women I took to this island, leaving them ready for a hen party of a lifetime. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Where are the others, I ask? The bride's eyes finally focus on me, wide and fearful. Your bridesmaids, I persist. Where are they? It all went wrong, she says. I'm about to speak, but the bride isn't finished. She draws herself into a hunch, grabbing both arms, wrapping herself in an embrace, despite the scorching weather. Her next words, leave me cold. She started it. Tell me that does not haunt you. Oh my God, I, I have to read this next. I have to, I have to make the time to stop reading this book tonight. Oh my God, that sounds so, so good. What do you guys think about it? What do you think of those other books? They sound amazing, don't they? Uh, oh my gosh, I'd love to hear what you have. Well, not what you have. I'd love to hear what you purchased this month and if you've already started reading yours, how the books are, if you got this book. She started it and what do you think of it? Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. And I am so, so excited that you guys uh, picked today to stop in and visit and chit chat with me for a bit. It means so much to me. So thank you guys so much. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys go out, have a fabulous rest of the week. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Don't go to an uncharted island. I know, it doesn't sound like Gilligan's Island, does it? Anyway, take care. Stay safe. Be kind. Be happy. Enjoy life. Have some fun. I love you guys so much, and I can't wait to read this book and talk to you about it later. Love you guys. Bye-bye.